Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, let's hook up this external antenna, which is a 4x4 Mimo, to this Peplink Max BR1 Pro 5G. It's quite a mouthful, but this is a third party uh, cellular router that you can buy and you can put in, you know, um, really any US carrier, you know, T Mobile, Verizon, US Cellular, and then any of those um, MVNOs that um, use those um, towers to work. And it does the latest and greatest 5G stuff, um, at least the uh, sub 6 gigahertz stuff, not the millimeter wave. And it's a really great unit. You know, um, Waveform is one of the companies that um, I bought stuff from, and they've actually sent me some of this stuff as well for the testing. And this is their favorite, you know, 5G router, even for a house, industrial, or if you're on the go, it is a fairly compact unit compared to a lot of others. And so it's fairly easy to travel with. But the question always is, can I get better signal if I put a external antenna on it? So I'm going to go through that. I'm going to test it, and I'm going to show you the speed differences I get uh, with this guy as a stock unit as well as what I get with this big antenna. All right, so first a brief um, explanation about some of the wireless signals and why it matters to have an external antenna out there. You know, to start with, I do a lot of videos on T-Mobile home internet and Verizon home internet. And for those, you're stuck with a gateway. And I've done a lot of modifications where you got to do these special connectors um, to hook on to their um, circuit boards or their modems in, internal to the unit so you can get SMA connectors coming out of them. Well, the Peplink devices already have these SMA connectors. So you can literally unscrew the stock antenna and you can screw right into a cable that will go to your external antenna. So that makes it a very quick and easy way to add your own antenna out there. So that's the first kind of big bonus of uh, a unit like this is that it's easy to add your own antennas. And then you have a plethora of antennas to pick from out there. And really it's probably going to depend on a couple things. One is what's your use case? Like is it at a home setting where you know you probably want a very directional antenna because you know where your best tower is and you want to optimize your signal strength towards that tower? Or if you're an RV or camping or you're a nomad and you're going around to different areas, you might want an omnidirectional one because every place you go, you don't want to try to figure out where your tower is. So that's um, certainly something you'll have to look at yourself. And for me, this one is this 4x4 MIMO panel antenna that Waveform sells. And it is directional. But they have ones like the gritty antenna, which are much more um, like a laser beam as far as uh, what type of signal they, they really hone in on. This one is kind of a, um, you know, it's more focused on the front and it has some back end as well and definitely less to the sides of the antenna. But the key here is what I've seen in all my testing, I've done lots of testing on different uh, devices and antennas, is the antenna needs to be placed in a good area. That might make logical sense to you, but a lot of people, even including myself really, um, aren't always willing to put it in the best location that it's needed. And it's because maybe the installation is harder or they don't think it's really um, going to make a big difference. But I'll show you in this test today that the difference between um, the device, the antenna, or the device for that matter, um, being in a good location versus a bad location at the same house can make a huge difference in your speed. And it's because of the types of signals that are out there. And the best signals that you want are typically higher frequency. They're, they're this new like sub-6 category. So that's the C-band for Verizon. And that is N41 for T-Mobile. And they're uh, a couple gigahertz signal. And therefore, they don't travel as well through objects or trees or whatnot. And so getting a good, clean signal for them is harder, especially if you're inside a building. So what I'm going to show today is I'm going to test just this unit on the first floor of my house, which is where I had my office originally set up, and that's where I had some home internets there. And I got okay signal, and I didn't really see the light until I branched out of there and I started going up higher in my house or going above the roof line and going outside. That's really where um, I'm able to pick up like N41 where I can't typically get it down on the first floor of my house. Okay, and then we'll go up to my third floor. It's like a loft space beside the attic. The attic is also on the third floor right beside it. And that's where I typically have my antennas mounted is because I don't want to put them all the way outside. Um, probably because I'm doing a lot of these testing. I do have a big TV mast antenna that is actually great for mounting these things. But like right now, it just snowed today. I really don't feel like climbing up the snowy tower to do this testing. So I'm going to stay inside where I don't risk falling. But what that means is that now I have to go through, at a minimum, 
the plywood and the shingles to get um, my my signal you know from outside to inside that attic space so that's going to hurt my signal quality some which means this testing I'm going to show you is not the absolute best but it's reasonably good at showing you um, the the amount of speed that you can gain by going to an external antenna so um, as always this is going to vary by you a lot meaning you know where you live what signals you get what carrier you have that's going to change a lot. So this is really just an indication of what I get as a difference. But some people, they might put up and say, hey, I got no difference. Other people will be like, holy cow, I got, you know, one or two megabits per second down, and now I get 300. Um, so it's always going to depend on your exact situation. But let's go up there and do some testing and see what I get here at my house. All right, so now I'm on the first floor in my old office, and I am connected to the T-Mobile here. I'll do Verizon here next, but just to show you here on T-Mobile, you can see that I'm on 5G NSA, and this is all auto settings right now for this pep link. And it is actually on um, band N41, which, like I said, I don't always get that down here. Sometimes it's just N71. And then my anchor is a LTE band 2 there. And what we'll see here is we'll do a speed test and just see what kind of speeds we get. The other thing I want you to look at is the ping. So you can see the yellow uh, ping is 80. That's unloaded ping, which means when there's no um, data going back and forth, you're not sending data. And then that green one is the download loaded ping. And now we're going to do the purple um, upload loaded ping. And what that means is when you're sending data um, and you ask for a ping, um, it's typically slower when it's loaded. But, you know, those are not the best numbers there. T-Mobile seems to be pretty poor. Um, in fact, you can see the upload ping it says is four seconds, which is absurd. But the point here is I'm getting about 80 down and it looks like about three up on T-Mobile. All right, so that is on the auto setting, but what I wanna do is show you um, that you might wanna check other bands as well. So even when you're doing with an antenna, you do wanna check out other bands. So I'm gonna go back in here to my settings on here, and now I'm going to tell it to not use band N41 and then I will go ahead and save these settings. All right, so now give it a second to uh, reset its little modem here. And now we can see that I'm on band N71, but still on the uh, band two for the anchor. So let's go to the speed test and see what happens now running the same test, but instead of N41, I'm now in 71. So my ping is very similar. Didn't change much for unloaded. But if you look here, you can see my speeds are actually faster than on N41. And so that's probably why a lot of times it will pick N71 over N41 as the default, but it doesn't always. And so that's something you have to check. And one thing to know is if you have T-Mobile, N71 is typically a better upload than N41 because of the way that they do the uh, data packet uh, breakdown. So you can see my uh, download loaded ping was actually reasonable and my upload got better, but it's still very bad. But overall, my speeds are actually better on N71 down here uh, for T-Mobile. So let's switch over to Verizon. All right, so to switch to Verizon, I just go in here. I have both SIM cards actually in there. So I'm just going to uncheck the B SIM card and check the A SIM card. That way I am connected to the Verizon SIM. All right, so now we're connected to Verizon. And what you'll see here is the Verizon connects to 5G NSA as well. And that top one, that uh, band N77, that's the C band, which is a great um, band to be on. That's their um, their fast one. And you can see what's so impressive about this peplink is that it actually has three LTE bands. You know, one's a primary that band 66, and then it has a secondary band 66, and then also a band two. So I have four signals coming into this router right now that it is aggregating all together. So let's run a speed test down here and then what I'll do is I'll turn off N77 to just show you in case you don't get that. All right, so let's open up the speed test here and let's run it. And what I'll do is this is with all those bands, but I'll turn off N77 just in case you don't get N77, which is a really great band. Um, and we'll see what the speed differences are. Okay, so there we go. Now what's interesting here is looking at the pings. My pings are worse than the T-Mobile War, actually. And what's crazy, this is the first time I think I've seen the Verizon one B 
be over the uh, four seconds for the loaded upload ping. So I might even have something going on. I, I know both of these Verizon and T-Mobile cells are on the same tower about a mile away from me. So they might actually have something going on with the backhaul network that is causing some, um, you know, slowness going on there. But um, that's fine. We'll test it just like it is and uh, just know you might see something different yourself. All right, so let's go in here to the settings now. And like I said, we're going to turn off the um, N77 band so that we know that we get off of that. And we'll just see what happens when we have the regular, I think they call it 5G nationwide would be um, what we would get with them. All right, so now we hopped on to band N5 for their 5G, and we still get those same three LTE um, aggregate bands there. So let's go back in and just retest it. All right, so first thing I noticed there is my ping it got much better. It's actually a very good ping. And then it looks like, you know, speeds are definitely slower, but, um, you know, about on par with where T-Mobile was. And so again on here, you can see how much better the upload is. So you always have to make sure you understand your signals that you have available and which ones matter because here my pings are way better and my upload's way better. And honestly, 78 is perfectly um, reasonable speed. So for some people, you know, you might actually not want to be on their C-band depending on what your signal is, unless perhaps you get a antenna. So let's go see what happens when we uh, go upstairs. All right, so now I'm up in the third floor loft and I have just the peplink stock again, no external antenna. You can see I'm still, um, you know, I, I locked myself out of N77, so I'm just doing the N5 for the 5G. And you can see I still have the same LTE uh, band 66 and band 2. So let's see what my speeds have changed to just by moving it. So is that 78 and 13 downstairs? And just by moving the router stock up um, two floors basically we can see what kind of speed difference we get and we see the ping did get better and we actually see that our uh, download speeds are not uh, improved okay so there we go we can see that our um, our speeds really you know i would say in some part are probably about the same overall if you consider all the noise so um, let's try to see what happens if i go back on to n77 all right, there we go. Now we are back on N77 and again, the same LTE band. So let's just go and test our speeds. All right, there we go. Now, if you were watching the download, it was very flat there at the 300 to 320 uh, megabits per second down. From what I've seen, that is a throttle on their, um, on their C band, at least for the home internet uh, SIM card that I do have. Now the upload, it seems to be more like a 20 to 30 megabit per second um, limit. So I'm definitely not there yet on the upload, but I would not be surprised if adding a antenna on the Verizon C-band does not improve. And I think that's because I'm throttled by the carrier, but let's keep going here. Let's switch back to T-Mobile and see what they get with just the stock pep link up here. All right, so we have the T-Mobile SIM active up here in the third floor, just the stock pep link. You can see that I locked us out of N41, so I'm just on band N71 and band 2. So let's check out the speed. All right, so I actually ran several of these tasks. I wasn't very happy with them. But with the stock unit, you know, it's not getting really any faster speeds up here on N71. The upload's a little bit faster, but, you know, my uh, my pings are still uh, not good. In fact, the unloaded is is um, significantly worse. So let's just go back to N41 and see what it does. All right. So now we are on N41 and band 66 and again, stock antennas. All right, there we go. So certainly better than it was down on the, the first floor, especially the upload speed. But you can still see that I have some um, room for improvement. All right, so let's hook up the 4x4 MIMO antenna according to waveform instructions and see what it does for us. All right, so here's the setup up on the third floor loft. You can see I just hooked up the antennas there according to waveform instructions that are printed out. And that's where this A is hooked up to the first um, antenna lead. And then the B is hooked up to the third. The C is hooked up to the second. 
and the D is hooked up to the last antenna lead, according to this diagram here. And then if you look at where these leads go, this is their standard 30-foot um, lead, and that just goes into here, into my attic, and then I have a 4x4 set up there. You can see I actually have a 2x2 two two as well, but for this testing, I'm just using the 4x4. All right, so now we are still on T-Mobile, but this time I just hooked up the 4x4 antenna. And if we go in here, we can see that I am on band uh, N41 for my 5G, and now I have both LTE 66 and LTE 2 aggregated for my LTEs. So let me go in and see what kind of speeds I get for that. All right, wow. That is, that is uh, one of my fastest speeds I've gotten here. Um, you can see that that is a massive improvement on, uh, especially the upload. I think that was what, uh, five times or something, my upload. And then the download isn't quite as big of a jump, but still a significant uh, jump in download speeds. And again, the only thing that was changed there is I went from stock antennas to the waveform 4x4. And, you know, honestly, like I said, this is not even a that aggressive of a test because the um, gateway or the router is basically at the same height as my antenna and it's just about you know uh, 30 feet away so this is truly uh, the difference between the antenna and the stock little antennas on there all right real fast just to show you n71 with the waveform antenna so I'm, i took off n41 as an option and let's just run a speed test to see what we get once we um, go to a slower 5g signal All right, there we go. So still very uh, big improvements there. You know, again, my upload was actually almost the same as the N41 setup, but um, you know, the download is a massive improvement over where it was before. So even if you don't get the N41, you can still get a very big improvement with the um, the 4x4 MIMO antenna. All right, so now we are on Verizon Wireless and we are on the 4x4 MIMO antenna. So you can see there we have Four bands again looks like the same as we had before and i'm allowing it auto mode so that means it will do um in 77 the c band all right so it looks like that holds true to my theories before where the download is capped around the 320 mark now you can see the upload before i was not able to get um, what i thought was the throttle and now it looks like i clearly did um, you can see there my pings are very much improved and they look pretty good. So, you know, this shows you that even on the C-band when you're throttled, that this 4x4 MIMO in my situation actually did help me significantly with both ping and my upload speeds. All right, so let's hop off of the N77 band and just see what we get when we do um, the 5G Nationwide. All right, so now we are on the N5, which is 5G nationwide for Verizon. We have the 4x4 MIMO hooked up, and we got the band 66 and 2 as our LTE. So let's go see what our speeds are. All right, so this was the first time I've done actually a test like this with um, the Verizon setup where I don't use the C band with a good antenna. And what was interesting was the shape of the curve made me really question um, the data, meaning it started off a lot faster and then they both taper off to a very, very flat 72 down and 12 up. So I have to wonder if that is throttled. But if I look at those pings, those pings are some of the best pings I've had, especially the loaded pings for a cellular network ever. So that is something to say about the waveform 4x4. Because I really think it's helping me out with that. And this is, again, with it in my attic. I think I could even eke out a little bit better if I was outside um, the roof altogether.